Welcome everyone to another mod spotlight and today we are gonna cover the Tinker's Construct mod. A very much requested mod of you guys, you wanted me to review this and here it is. Hell yeah! Now what does it actually do? It will make you able in various very interesting ways to craft certain tools and weapons such as those out of this list, out of the creative menu. The interesting part about this mod is how to get there, how to make the tools. There are some very nifty functionalities implemented into the mod, such as this book, which you will get once you create a new world or log in the first time on a server. And you can simply read it and it will give you the basics and how you have to get started with this mod. Once you progress in the mod, you will also be given further books and uh, so you will always have to check back what is up next. But we are not going to read through the books. I'm going to simply explain you in this video what you can do. So without further ado, let's get started. The first two things you want to create are a blank pattern and a stencil table. The blank pattern crafted like this is used within the recipe for the stencil table. Now once you've crafted your first stencil table, you will be actually given this second book that will give you further instructions, but more to that later on. Three more blocks included into the first book are the part builder, the pattern chest and the tool station with pretty easy recipes using a blank pattern on top of an oak wood for the part builder, chest for a pattern chest and the crafting table for the tool station. And with all of these blocks we are now well established and can finally get into the processing stage of the mod. Alright, I put down all of the blocks that we've just created, they are ready to be used. Now the way this mod works is that you actually have to assemble tools and weapons using different parts. Now to understand this a little bit better, let's have a look into the second book that we've been given. Onto the second page you can see, for instance, how to create a pickaxe. You will need a pickaxe head, a tool rod and a tool binding. Now the way you create that is actually using blank patterns and the stencil table. Simply drag and drop one of your blank patterns into the stencil table and with those two buttons you can switch between the different patterns there are. Now right here we already have the pickaxe head, that's what we are going to need in order to create our first pickaxe. We are also going to need, let me see, I think this one is right here, the tool rod pattern. And last but not least, we are going to need a tool binding. Now you can see there's a bunch of things that are pretty self-explanatory, but there's also things that we probably don't know because this mod also implements different kinds of weapons. Now let's see, yeah, tool binding pattern, that's what we need, those three components. Next up, we are going to have a look into the part builder. Now since I've placed this guy directly next to the pattern chest, the pattern chest becomes actually part of the interface of the part builder. And it is simply used in order to store all of your patterns so you can reuse them whenever you wish. The way the interface works is pretty straightforward. You have some spots for your patterns and also spots for your materials. So let's exemplify this a little bit and create our first pickaxe head placing the pattern right there and I'm gonna use iron for our first tool. Right here you will be given some detailed information on what you will actually get out of this tool, so pretty cool, what it will be able to mine, how fast it is, etc. And right here we have the products that we get out of it. So let's grab this iron pickaxe head and drag this pattern into our pattern chest. I'm also gonna make one of those tool raw patterns going to place that right here and since this is probably the shaft of the tool, the rod basically, we are going to use some wood for that, why not? So let's place that right here and you will actually get one of the wood rod as well as two leftover sticks. Cool. Let's also make this tool binding, place it right here and this can be iron for instance as well. You will get one iron binding and also an iron chunk. The material coast is actually determined by the little modifier here in the tooltip, so you can see the pickaxe head has a material coast of 1, which means it will use up a full ingot or block, and the tool raw pattern only has a material coast of 
0.5, which means we can use this iron chunk that we got from the tool binding pattern, which also only costed half an ingot. So this iron chunk is worth half an ingot, and we should be able to make another rod out of iron if we wanted to. Now the reason for using different materials for rods and for all of the other stuff is explained in this second book very well. Once you get to this page you will be able to see all the different materials that are available for usage within this system and there is a bunch of them and they will all influence your tools and weapons in various ways. Let's for instance have a look at the iron and stone. You can see that the durability of iron is much higher as well as the handle modifier. The handle modifier will also influence your durability so it is really important what kind of materials you use for each part. If I would use wood as a handle, I would only get a 1.0 modifier, which means uh, nothing will change. But if I use stone, I'll, it will half the durability of my tool, so that is a very bad choice for the material for the rod. But if I went with iron, a full iron tool, it would change the durability uh, with the 1.3x handle modifier and give me a full tool durability or a potential durability of 3 to 5. So with that in mind, just thumb through the book and find what materials you want to use for the different parts, what uh, advantages they will give you and maybe you will be able to come up with very interesting creations for specific situations. Two more things I want to mention are the reinforced level, which you of course get a lot of with obsidian, and it will simply give you a chance to not use any durability. So the higher the reinforced level is, the less durability you will use. There's also things like the uh, plus one modifiers, and this will give you the ability to apply modifiers to your tools. But before we do that, we actually want to create our first tool, right? To do so, we are finally going to have a look into the tool station. Now this guy is pretty self-explanatory, it has some useful tool tips and you cannot do much wrong with it. So the one thing we want to create right now is a pickaxe. So we're going to choose the button for the pickaxe. You can see there are slots for all of the tool parts that we've made. We can even name it right here if we wanted to and we can also see the different statistics on it as well as the modifiers and those guys are really interesting and we get to that in just a bit. But first of all, let's create our tool fully out of iron. It has a reinforced level of one. We get some nifty sound effects and here we have our first tool. So now that we know everything about the process of making a tool from scratch, we should have a look into the book once more and see what tools and weapons are actually available to us. So we have the pickaxe, we know what that does, we have a shovel, hatchet, which is uh, a simple axe, we also have the mattock, which is a combination of an axe and a shovel. We also have a uh, weapons such as the broadsword, longsword, rapier, dagger, frying pan and the battle sign and I will show you the advantages of each of those right now. The advantage of a broadsword is that you can reduce most types of damages by half simply by blocking. The advantages of longswords are 1.5 times the damage and knockback when you hit someone while sprinting. And you can also hold right click and once you release it you will make a leap forward. The rapiers will also profit from the 1.5 times damage and knockback while sprinting, but they will make a leap backwards if you right click, just like that. And they will also penetrate more easily through armor and blocking. The dagger is a very fun weapon, I have to say. You can use it with left click in order to do normal melee damage, but you can also throw your dagger using uh, the right click and it will actually throw your dagger, it will do some harm and you can pick it up again. Now the frying pan is also a fun one, you can use it similar to the broadsword in order to block and reduce most types of damages by half. You can also shift and right click in order to place it down and you will be able to cook up tons of food at the same time. 
you can simply pick it up you don't need a tool to do so and it will also uh, do more damage on foes and uh, or more knockback actually and it will also occasionally stun them which is pretty fun Last but not least we have the battle signs which can be used as a weapon but instead of placing them while right clicking it will also block and reduce most types of damages by half. So let's finally have a look at the modifiers. This is a really fun part of the mod and will change the way your tools behave and act completely in some cases or how they will perform what they will be capable of doing so let's have a look at a few basic materials what you're going to need is the tool station with this uh, repair and modification tab open and what we need to do is simply place our pickaxe right here and the respective materials on the other side the first modifier item is a diamond. What you can do is simply place it in here and you can see it took off one of our modifiers remaining but added a, a diamond down in the list here and if I take it out of here it will apply it. I can still take this back if I wanted to. And you can see by hovering over the end product what it will actually do. It will increase the durability by 500 uses. Pretty useful. Now if I use that and create it, I will be taken off one of the modifiers and uh, I will only be able to add two more of those. So let's have a look at the emerald upgrade. An emerald will actually cause the durability to go up by 50% instead of just the 500 uses. So if you already have tons of uses on an item, an emerald might be much more worth it. We can also use redstone in order to create a haste pick and it will only apply a little bit of haste. So right now you can see I have redstone 1 of 50. So you would have to put this 50 times through there in order to get the most efficiency or haste out of it. And beware, once you've reached the 50 out of 50, it will use another modifier in order to increase this even more. We can also use Lapis Lazuli in order to increase the luck on our tool, which is simply the same as Fortune. And you can see Lapis 1 out of 450, so you can uh, upgrade this by quite a bit and use a bunch of Lapis in order to do so. Now that we understand the basic concept of the modifiers, again we should have a look into the book on the very end. There you will be able to see all the modifiers. So those I have already shown you there's also some auto repair some of the loot you will have to get from other mobs some of them you can create for instance this uh, lava ball you are able to create using uh, lava buckets and different loot from the nether you can see the luck that I've shown you there's also sharpness fiery necrotic that you get from the Wither skeletons, there are silky upgrades and so on and so forth. I don't want to spoil everything but this one here I have to show you uh, at least in the book. You can see you will be able to include uh, industrial craft two things onto a tool or apply it onto a tool and it will use charges and can be charged instead of using durability and that is just freaking sick, don't you think? Last but not least we have ways to increase the modifier slots that we have on a tool available using a gold block and a diamond together with the tool. You can also use a nether star and it will add an additional modifier slot to your tool. Pretty cool. The last part of this video I want to dedicate towards world generation as well as the multi-block structure that comes along with this mod. There will be some gravel ore type of stuff on the overworld that you will have to dig up with a shovel and you can simply cook it up in a furnace to get an ingot. It is just an additional way in order to get all the different kinds of ingots there are. You will also come across other world generation stuff such as aluminum, cobalt or ardite and some of the stuff you will not even be able to pick up with a diamond pick you will need better tools in order to do so so let's have a look into the book once again and switch back to the 
more rare or special materials and you can see for instance we have this cobalt which has a mining level of 4 and we I think potentially cannot mine that with a diamond pick we might need something like this uh, alumite right here which also has a mining level of 4 which is actually higher than a diamond but let's not waste too much time with looking at the world generation uh, this is also something I want you to discover but how to deal with the metal is something else let's have a look at the multi-block structure right now the thing that we want to make is a smeltery. In order to do so, we need a few types of things. The first thing we want to make is grout using some sand, gravel and clay. Simply cook it up in order to get the seared bricks and those are used within the recipes that follow. For instance, we have seared bricks. Uh, they can also be used as a building material. Uh, we also have the smeltery controller, a smeltery drain, we have the lava tank, seared glass, seared windows, we have a seared faucet, casting table and last but not least a casting basin. Now let's see how to put those things actually together. As a little side note, you will be given the third book after you've created your first seared brick. So you can have a look in here and it will explain you the multi-block structure and what kinds of metals you can actually cook up. Alright, let's build our first smeltery. The way you do that is with a 3x3 grid of seared bricks and you will also have to surround the structure with seared bricks. You can also use other types of blocks. I'm going to leave two spots empty for special blocks such as the smeltery controller which has the interface and right now it is not functioning because the structure isn't complete yet. To complete it we are going to need a lava tank right here that will heat the whole thing up. We are also going to have to keep it filled with lava but right here we can now see it indicates that it is working and the interface has been expanded. What we need to do now is add a smeltery drain uh, in order to get the liquid out of there once it's, it has been smelted. You have to do this on the second layer of the multi-block structure because we are going to need to add one of these seared faucets and if we do that you can see kind of how the liquid is supposed to get out of there and down below we are going to add one of these casting tables. What we need to do is complete the structure now we can use any types of blocks for instance we uh, want to have a look in there as well so we can use some seared windows just shift click to put it on the smeltery and the rest we are going to complete with normal seared bricks just like that cool now if we have a look into the interface once again we can see that there is a lot more space now in order to add the different kinds of ores what we need to do now is of course fill this up with lava so let me just quickly do that and we can also have a look into our book the mighty smelting and have a look at the different ingots we can actually make. The one we are most interested in right now is the aluminum brass which is made out of three aluminum and one copper. In order to get the blank cast which will be the new system in combination with the smeltery to get the, the tool parts and the weapon parts uh, with different materials that you could not get otherwise. So let's have a look into the smeltery and actually place that copper ore and three of those aluminum ores just like that and we can see they actually appear within uh, the smeltery which is a pretty nifty feature but you cannot place them manually in there so you will have to use this interface and right here we have the progress bar of them being smelted and once they do so they will appear as a liquid and there we go, all of the ores have been smelted down into liquid. What we can do now is right click on our searing faucet that is above the casting table and we will get this liquid out of there. If we wait a few seconds it will dry down, we can right click once again and it will be added to our inventory. Once you have your blank cast you can get over to your stencil table and do the same process as you've done with the blank patterns. Simply choose your patterns, you can get the pickaxe head for instance right here. The only thing we need now is a special material that we need to have uh, smelted in order to get it into a pickaxe head. We cannot do that with the 
uh, actually with the part builder. Of course what I want to make myself is the best kind of material, the alumite, which is made out of aluminum five times, two iron and two obsidian. So let's actually place those guys into the smeltery. Two iron, two obsidian and five aluminum. Pretty cool. So I'm just gonna let that cook up and I'll be right back. Great, it didn't even take that long and we ended up with some precious pink liquid. The only thing we need to do is put our uh, cast onto the casting table, right click the pipe, the liquid will drain out and what we will end up with is an alumi pickaxe head. Pretty cool. So now you know the way how to create the tools out of the liquid metals that you can only get in this form and I think this is a pretty darn realistic implementation at least as realistic as it can get in Minecraft. Alright guys this covers the basic functionality of this mod now it is up to you I could go on for another 20 minutes and create all sorts of crazy combinations and weapons and tools and modify them but I want to keep this video short and informational. Now it is all up to you to come up with the uh, crazy combinations. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and leaving a like. Uh, you can have a look in the description. There you will find a link to the forum thread. If you have any questions, you can also put them down in the comment section. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.